Hello everyone, it's Becky from Isle of Thorndale. Um, this year, because we can't do the Winter Carnival, we have come up with a few different ideas so that we can um, still celebrate Family Day and our traditional Winter Carnival, but uh, you'll have to do it on your own from your own home or your own property. So last year, if you recall, we um, had our first year uh, making beaver tails. I'm just gonna share my screen here for a second. Um, so we made beaver tails. So if you're not sure what beaver tails are, um, we're probably in trouble for using the, the, um, the brand beaver tail because it actually exists somewhere, but basically it's a deep fried uh, pastry and then you top it with that. I think the most common is probably icing sugar and cinnamon. Um, but last year at the Winter Carnival, we had some great volunteers, including a lot of youth, and we had a whole bunch of different toppings. So we had like apple pie filling, whipped cream, um, Nutella and M&Ms and Reese's Pieces and chocolate chips and marshmallow fluff and all sorts of things. So people could kind of um, choose from a few different options um, and the lions helped us by deep frying it. So. Uh, Sassy's made the dough for us, our volunteers rolled it out, the lions deep fried it, and then uh, all of our winter carnival visitors could come and, um, and, and choose their toppings and, and it was really something um, different. So because that was a big hit last year, uh, we thought we will um, we'll do the same this year and we'll share with you a, a recipe that's available online. Um, the website's at the bottom here if you want to go straight to that website. Um, but to make your own beaver tails at home, I've made beaver tails a number of times at work and they're always a hit and it's quite simple to make. Um, so here's what you're going to need. Uh, what I actually use is an electric frying pan because I don't have a deep fryer. I have no idea if an air fryer is capable of this sort of thing. I don't have one, I don't have any experience with one. So just an old school electric fryer. Um, so I've got this one and it has a bit of depth to it. Um, so you're going to end up filling that with oil and uh, heat that up. So it's just a few inches deep. It doesn't have to be a lot, but um, that's what that's what I've used works every time. Um, you definitely need a rolling pin, a cutting board, things like that. Um, I don't know if anybody follows uh, uh, her name's Jennifer Reed, so she's actually Johnny Reed's wife. If you don't know who Johnny Reed is, then have a look. So Jennifer Reed actually just shared in her uh, Insta stories today that she uses these silicone mats to roll out dough because they stick to the countertop. And then as you're rolling out dough, it, um, the your cutting board doesn't slide around. So we're going to use one of these today. So this just a silicone mat that you would put on your baking sheet when you're making cookies. We're going to use that as our rolling surface. Uh, and then there's a whole list of ingredients here. So I think these are all pretty standard things that you likely have in your pantry. And if you don't, then I'm sure you could pop up to Sassy's or the Thorndale Food Mart and uh, get everything that you need. So that's what we're um, going to need. Um, and let's get started with the first step. So um, to prepare the dough. So it's just like making um, other dough, like pizza dough, that kind of stuff. Uh, you just need one large bowl and then we're going to dissolve five teaspoons of yeast and a half a cup of warm water. So I just always use um, this brand of yeast and I've got my little trusty measure here. So I'm just going to do one batch for now. Um, it'll make a lot, a lot of beaver tails. So my neighbors will be happy with me because um, they'll get to eat some of these. So that's five teaspoons of um, yeast. And then I'm going to just go grab, um, I'm just going to go grab a half a cup of warm water. Okay, so I have my half a cup of warm water here. Um, and I'm just pouring it into the bowl with the yeast. And I'm just going to stir it around to dissolve it. Um, and here in the from the website, it actually says to add in your white sugar, a quarter teaspoon of white sugar. I like to dissolve my yeast first and kind of let it um, start to bubble before I add in sugar. But you can do what uh, the recipe says or what your experience is. Okay, so I've just um, added in the, the warm water and the five teaspoons of um, yeast and just kind of stirred that around 
um, to help it dissolve. So once I feel like I've got like all the, the clump kind of smush, maybe I'm just impatient, but um, then you're just gonna let that warm water and yeast sit for a few minutes um, and you'll see it start to activate and bubble. So, um, so we'll kind of pause things as that happens and then we'll add in the sugar and go on to the next step. So if you're wondering how long is this gonna take, um, uh, this recipe asks for you to make the dough and then let it sit for about 40 minutes because then it's going to rise and then you're going to kind of gently poke it down um, and then start to um, shape it into the beaver tail. So I would say you probably need probably about an hour to, to make your beaver tails um, and that will include the rise time and um, the time for um, frying and then of course eating. So um, we'll let that happen. And um, what we want to make sure people do is once you make these, take some pictures and uh, send them to us. You can email info at ilovecornel.ca or tag us on Instagram, share to our Facebook page, all of that kind of stuff because we'd like to see, um, you know, what everybody's doing for family day to celebrate Winter Carnival at home. So we'll let this uh, yeast activate and then we'll be back. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is just add a little teeny tiny, little quarter teaspoon of white sugar and throw that in. And then I'm just gonna let that sit for a couple minutes too. And then we'll go on to our next step. Okay, so my um, yeast mixture has started to kind of bubble up a little bit and expand. So I know we're ready to carry on. So we're gonna go to the next step. So we're gonna, going to add in a third of a cup of white sugar and then one cup of milk. Sorry, I don't have a fancy um, way to demonstrate this in my home kitchen. A uh, teaspoon of vanilla and it's nothing fancy, just no judgment here. Little vanilla extract, we're gonna do a teaspoon of that. And then I've got two eggs from Two eggs from Friendly Corners. And then we need a third of a cup of canola oil. And then we need one and a half teaspoons of salt. So, and then it's almost time for us to get our Hands messy. Oh yeah. Okay. Now we need. I always just like to give this a little bit of a stir before I add flour in. I don't know if that's right or wrong, but hasn't failed me yet. Okay. The next thing we need to do is is most of the flour. So um, you know, like with any dough recipe, you're just going to add some in, and then um, gradually mix it in and then eventually get up to what you need. So I'm gonna start there with three cups and then um, start mixing this together. Uh, and then we'll add some more. So we'll eventually get to five cups that we need. So um, I'm not using an electric mixer uh, right now, but pretty sure you could if you're a dough hook. So um, you do really, that's fine. Okay, so three cups is super soupy. So I'm going to add in the fourth cup now. And mix that in. So I don't know. Let's see, but um, you know how, maybe you don't know, maybe you've never made dough for anything before and this is your first time. And if it is, great. You're gonna be superstar after this. So as you stir and mix, um, the dough eventually kind of comes together, sticks to itself. And I'm going to add in about a half a cup now. So I'm almost at the five cup mark. So at this point, I'm just gonna rewash my hands and um, then I'm gonna knead. So I don't know about you, but I don't like to wear any jewelry or anything like that because I really like to get into it. So I'm just gonna pause for a sec and then go knead some dough and then we'll carry on with our next step. <laughs> okay. So clearly I have a super fancy uh, kitchen demo set up here. Yeah. So I brought you over to the, the corner of the kitchen where I've got um, my cutting board. So I'm just gonna lightly flour the cutting board so that I can kind of pull this dough out and just kind of knead it together. So 
just says made for five to eight minutes using a dough hook or adding flour uh, until it's elastic. So you'll you'll definitely feel that. Um, and if you haven't been uh, doing your boot camp with Ann Stouffer during uh, quarantine, then maybe you're going to get a little bit winded here. But um, last year, just fun facts here. Um, so like I said, last year was our first year with um, doing the beaver tails at the Winter Carnival. And we had Sassies make the dough for us. They used um, whole wheat flour, which I think is like what the recipe calls for um, on a few different sources. But um, I just used regular white flour for these and I find them exceptional. Um, so anyway, last year, Sassies made the dough for us so that we, we didn't have to do this part of the prep. Um, as well as the rest of the winter carnival. But anyway, they made the dough and um, we ended up serving close to 500 portions of beaver tails. So um, that's how popular these guys were last year. And um, they were just, um, we didn't charge like a set rate, it was just by donation. So um, that's kind of the way the winter carnival is every year. We just kind of, we like to keep things as accessible as possible for our residents and families. Um, and we just ask donation for a lot of our events um, so that we can help cover the costs. But uh, typically we have lots of sponsors that contribute to these events um, and invest in our community because it's just kind of the, the Thorndale way. That's what everybody does. So anyway, gosh, are you getting windy yet too, needing your dough, <laughs> breaking a sweat? Um, so you can kind of feel the consistency of the dough changing um, and definitely coming to feel that uh, elastic -y type um, consistency. So um, the next step is coming right up. So oh, let's go there. So um, you're going to take your bowl and kind of get rid of all this extra flour and stuff. Um, and then you're just going to put a little bit of oil in the bottom of your your bowl and then you're going to set your um your dough ball in there and just kind of cover it a little bit with grease um and then you always take a warm dishcloth and cover the top of your bowl and then we're going to let the dough rise um, for about 30 or 40 minutes or as long as you can tolerate so um that's what's coming up next so i'm just going to clean out my bowl and uh get the oil in there Okay, so um, I've got a little bit of oil in the bottom of my bowl and I've just kind of moved my dough around to, to cover all the dough, dough just lightly in oil. I've got a damp dish rag right here. So now I'm just gonna kind of put the dough to bed for a little bit. So I'm just gonna take my dish towel and then cover it up. So typically when I make dough, I'll put it in like a warm place so that the heat helps it to rise a bit faster. Um, but you don't have to. And if you're looking behind me and thinking like, do you have a fire extinguisher here in your kitchen? I sure do. So um, especially when I'm going to use something like a fryer for grease, I definitely want to make sure um, that my fire extinguisher is handy because like you just never know. So um, while we're talking about fire safety, um, so the electric frying pan that I'm using has a lid. So it's certainly very important when you are going to cook anything, but especially with grease that you have um, uh, a lid that fits properly so that if your um, grease were to get too hot and flame up, then you could just smother the um, fire with the lid and um, you know, fire needs oxygen. So if you can cut off the oxygen, then you won't burn your house down. So please um, keep fire safety in mind when you're cooking at any time. Um, but definitely later, once we fire up the fryer, fire up the fryer, um, you know, don't go onto your social media and get distracted and let your grease get too hot and then um, burn your house down because that would be a darn shame and we don't want to be held responsible for that. So, um, you know, I think it's really important to take a minute and um, teach the members in your household a little bit about fire safety, um, you know, cooking safety and even how to use a fire extinguisher. So that's my, um, that's my <laughs> safety moment for you all. And I'm sure that the members of the Thorndale Fire Department appreciate that little bit, tidbit. Okay, so I'm going to let my dough 
just sit and uh, rise and go run some errands. And then when we come back, we will um, go on to the next step to roll out the dough, fire up that fryer and um, start frying some beaver tails. So the best part is yet to come. So we'll be back. Okay, so we are back. Uh, it's been a little while, so our dough has risen. Um, so hopefully yours has too. Um, and if not, you can just pause this until your dough has risen. So uh, if you peek under there, ours is, you know, at least doubled in size, if not more. So that's a great sign. So our next step is to actually, um, to, to kind of get little dough balls off and shape them into the beaver tails. Okay, so I'm just gonna share our screen here. So uh, I have a helper now and uh, she's gonna help us. So I'm just gonna um, share our screen so we can show you that recipe again. So we are at step four. So we're rolling out the dough. So um, so it says to gently deflate the dough. So we've washed our hands. So we're just gonna kind of have that satisfying feeling of punching in the dough a little bit. Um, and then um, and it, it's deflated. And then what we do, it says just to take a little, like pinch off a little golf ball size, but really it's like, if you want a big old beaver tail, obviously the more dough, um, the bigger your beaver tail is. Um, so if we do small ones, then we have more to share, which is great for our neighbors. Um, so basically pinch off a golf size piece of dough, as it says, and you're gonna roll it out on a floured surface um, into kind of an oval shape. And then we're just gonna lay it on a cookie sheet and um, cover them with that damp tea towel uh, as we wait for them, as we kind of work on all of them. So by the time we're, we're done shaping out all of these um, dough balls into beaver tails, you can do a little bit bigger. Then they'll have puffed up, risen a little bit more. And then by then our uh, oil will be heated up too and then we can start frying. So um, I do have our frying pan on and um, I've got it like maybe just about a third full of oil. Uh, and I've got the temperature, and I kind of start really slow and low with the temperature and just kind of see, because again, like I find cooking with a pot full of grease a little bit terrifying. Um, so I just want to kind of bring up the heat slowly um, and try not to burn ourselves and have a bigger problem. So the, the oil is coming up to, to the temperature right now. Um, basically, like with any grease, like if, if you were to take just, like if you were to get your finger damp and then just drop, put one little drop of water, if it kind of splatters and um, reacts, then your oil is hot. Um, but you, you don't want a whole lot of oil, or sorry, you don't want a whole lot of water because um, that's going to, you know, if it is hot, you're going to have a big problem. So if you feel like you need to test to see if the oil is hot, you can do just a tiny little tiny drop, but um, you'll know if it's, you can kind of hear it, you know, all that kind of stuff. So anyway, chills. Um, so we've got our cutting board that's floured. We're going to put a little bit of flour on our rolling pin. And then we're just going to kind of roll these out a little bit. And um, make sure that doesn't. Oh, that's okay. So we've got, um, like it says, an oval shape. Um, so you can kind of stretch it out with your hands a little bit. Um, basically the shape doesn't really matter. Um, so you can make it look like a beaver tail or you can make it look like an elephant ear, whichever your preference. But basically um, it's gonna be delicious no matter the shape. So I'm gonna take that one, just kind of stretched out and just lay it on my cookie sheet. I did put a little bit of parchment paper on our cookie sheet just to make it maybe easier to, um, to um, pull them off. So that's what we're gonna do here is just take all of our dough balls and get them rolled out um, closer to the shape of beaver tails. And then um, hopefully by then our, our grease will be warm enough. So we're just gonna pause this for a sec and um, you guys can roll out your dough balls too. And then we will 
get back to this in just a second. So, so like it says here, um, this one says four inches of oil in a fryer. Again, like I've just got our little electric fryer and just a little bit of oil, it just deep enough that they can sit in there and you'll flip them. They're gonna float on top, right? Or they'll eventually kind of float. Um, it says the temperature of the oil should be about 385 degrees. So we'll actually use our thermometer and, and keep an eye on that. Um, but we'll kind of turn up the heat on our fryer a little bit because I've got it about 250. So I can, I can push it a little bit. Um, and like I mentioned before, fire safety. So I just went over it with Chelsea. What are a couple of things we should keep in mind, Chelsea, when we have um, hot grease when we're cooking? Always have a lid that fits. Always have a lid that fits. So what else do we have on hand? Fire extinguisher. Fire extinguisher. There you go. Teach them young, everybody. So let's get our, our um, beaver tails shaped out here. Or elephant ears. Or elephant ears. Okay, so uh, Chelsea has almost all of the dough rolled out. Um, I was thinking the smaller you make them, the more obviously you'll have, but then you can try them with different toppings. So I don't know how many are here, like probably a two or three dozen, maybe. So we just got them layered up. So what about a baker's um, dozen? What about a baker's dozen? How many is a baker's dozen? 13, 15, yeah. So our um, oil is still heating up. Um, and we've almost got all of these rolled out. Too much. So the thickness, like obviously the thicker they are, the longer they'll take to cook. Um, but you know, that's kind of what we're doing. Not totally transparent, um, but then you're gonna kind of stretch them out a little bit more to shape into the tails too. So, you know, pretty sure you can't, you can't uh, do overdo anything wrong anything. here. Yeah. Wait, you never can overdo anything or do anything wrong with beaver tail or anything. No. Okay. Last one. Yep. Pretty thick. We just stretch them. Yep. Yeah. And we'll use some tongs to do the flipping. Yeah. And yeah, you can put it on there. Okay. So. Uh, all of our dough is now rolled out. We should be done with the rolling pin. Yes, uh, and um, next we're just going to test our oil and kind of see how things are. So sometimes as you cook them, if you cook a bunch, obviously the oil's going to cool off. So you might have to take a break in between um, some of your batches just to let your oil reheat or even top up your oil. So I'm just going to see. So our oil is not quite warm enough yet, but That's the next step. That is the next step. So let's go back to our slideshow here and show everybody what the next step is. All right, next step, step six is cooking the dough. So we stretch the oil, you can stretch them further into a shape if you want. Um, and then you're gonna add the dough one at a time Usually I can fit two or three into the dough at the same time. And then um, it's gonna kind of puff up a little bit more and um, float and get kind of golden brown. And then you flip it over. And then what we're going to do, um, we're, we're gonna take another cookie sheet and just have some paper towel on the bottom and then um, a cooling rack. So that our we can put our cooked beaver tails on the cooling rack and just the grease will kind of drip through onto that paper towel underneath. So that is our plan. And then uh, Chelsea and I were just talking about toppings. So you can do over here so I can hear you. So we have marshmallows, we can do whipped cream, we can do icing sugar. You can do anything you have. You can probably do caramel, chocolate chips, anything. Okay, so that's why we made ours small so that we can taste out a few different toppings. So, you know, if, um, 
Um, so let's just pause for a little bit while we get our um, dough up to temperature. Okay, so our first batch of um, beaver tails is in the fryer here. So you can see they're just kind of having a little bath in the grease and just starting to get a little bit golden brown. So I'm gonna pull these guys out and just kind of drip off some of that grease. Like I said, I've got, um, I just actually put a cutting board with um, paper towels and I'm going to lay them on top of there. So this is the moment we've all been waiting for. So your house is going to smell like grease for a little while. You're going to have flour on your floors, um, but it's going to be worth it. So just going to kind of stretch these guys out a little bit because they puffed up while we've been waiting. Just kind of dip them in. And that's all there is to it. We are now a beaver tail creator. So um, be sure to, um, I guess the next step we'll have to put some toppings on them. So we should do that while they're still warm. So that icing sugar kind of uh, just really melts right into the hot grease. So I'm just going to pause for a sec and then we'll make up some of the icing sugar and cinnamon. Just a classic one. Okay, so Chelsea's gonna make up the uh, icing sugar and cinnamon. So we've got just a big old bag of icing sugar there and the cinnamon from Sassy's. Um, so you can just put in like a, you can use this big tablespoon and put some in a bowl and then maybe put in like a tablespoon or so of the um, cinnamon. You're gonna have lots, kind of, like you should probably have like a, at least a cup or so. And then we're going to really coat the, the beaver tails in that. I'm going to flip these guys. I'm starting to get golden on one side. Let's give them a little flip. And the lid on, keep some of the heat in. That's a good start. Tablespoon of, okay. Here, I'm gonna throw in a few more. This, there's no uh, limit. There's no magic here. Like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, so stir that around a little bit and then we'll just. Like a, maybe like a gray color. Oh, like a light brown probably. Mm -hmm. White, brown, gray. Okay, so we've got that. There's something in there, but it doesn't matter. Okay, so we're just going to take that and totally cover up. You probably can't see because the fire's in the way. Sprinkle that on. The more, the merrier. And here's what I like chocolate cakes, chocolate Hershey mini eggs. Um, but we're adding chocolate sauce caramel. We pretty much add everything. Mom, that's so hot, eh? All right, step back because this is going to be hot. I'm just going to pause this for a second. Okay, so here are the first couple batches out. Chelsea, you want to try one with just the icing sugar and cinnamon? Uh huh. Uh huh. I'll get out and walk you the taste tester. All right. There you go. Try that out. Might as well try some too. Don't need over top of that. Come on over here. Let's put it right everything off. Good. Super good. Mm -hmm. All right. So I hope you um, try making beaver tails this family day. 
um, to celebrate our winter carnival at home. And like I said, be sure to uh, send us your pictures or videos or, you know, tag us on social media. So anyway, we enjoyed making these and uh, we hope you do too. Take care.